right, what's going on today, YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite cyclist YouTube channel. This week, we're talking about a cool new light with an awesome name to it. But before I get into today's video, if you are new to my channel, make sure you head down below, hit that subscribe button for me. If you already are subscribed, make sure you hit that bell icon right next to that. That way you get notified every time I upload. That way you don't miss any of this awesome cycling content on this channel. So like I said, today we're checking out a front bike light that has a pretty cool name to it. And in my opinion, it works really well as well. So the light we're checking out today is from the guys over at Gakiran, And this is the Kiwi 1200. So you might hear the name Kiwi and you're like, it's a fruit. What do you mean a fruit? A fruit's a bike light? How does that make any sense? Wrong Kiwi. I'll tell you that right off the bat. So a kiwi, if you don't know what a kiwi is, a kiwi is actually a bird in New Zealand. So New Zealand has a little bird called a kiwi. It's about the size of a chicken and it's a nocturnal bird. Nocturnal bird. So light, bike light, nocturnal makes sense. Another big thing with the, with the kiwi is that it has a long front beak on it and kind of goes along with the styling of this one. It's kind of a longer design, long thin design. It's probably one of the thinnest bike lights I've seen and it that's kind of, kind of, I think that's kind of a cool thing. It goes along with the name of the bird. Also along with that, it even has little pictures of Kiwi on it. It's got a Kiwi on the power button. It's got a Kiwi on the charge port. And it's got Kiwis on the side there. And it says, light up your way on the side there. Nocturnal animal. So they kind of went along with the whole Kiwi theme. I like it. I like the New Zealand. I like New Zealand. I like Kiwis. It's kind of cool thing. So that's what we're checking out today is this cool little bike light here. So when you get the package for the light, of course, you're going to get the light itself. The light itself is going to be a USB-C, so you can recharge off of there. So you get the light USB-C on there. This one, like the name says, max lumens is going to be 1200 lumens. You'll get about two hours out of that. Medium, 600 lumens, four hours. Low, 300 lumens, seven hours. And then, of course, you have kind of a a fade in and out. That's called the breath mode. So it goes from 100 to 50, 100 to 50. You got 20 hours out of that. And then there's your daytime flash, which it flashes and turns off, flashes, turns off, flashes, turns off. That one you get 600 lumens, about 24 hours on that one. So you did get some decent runtime on this, especially for you know a bike light nowadays. You get decent runtime. So with this one, it does give you a USB-C to USB-C plug here. So kind of neat. You don't see that very often. And one of the big reasons for that is because with this USB-C port you can actually use this light as a power bank. I can't say yeah, I've seen very many lights with power banks built in, so kind of cool. You can charge your phone or whatever you need to off your light if you need to. Kind of cool. Along with that, you come with all sorts of different mounts for it. So number one, you come with this sliding mount here. So pretty much it would slide onto our mount right here. And then it has kind of your GoPro finger style mount on there. So you have that option available. Along with that, if you don't have a style mount like that, you have this one that just kind of sucks onto the handlebars. Just kind of a nice twist guy. I've used these a bunch of times. They work good. There's nothing wrong with these guys. They work good if you don't have a, you pretty much unscrew this guy all the way. And this should I go pop all the way out. Allows you to pretty much strap that guy under your handlebars put this guy right back through, and then wherever it is, you just tighten up this little nut onto, onto the end. If we can, there we go. Just tighten that guy onto the end, and pretty much as you turn this, it will actually tighten this onto the handlebars. It's kind of a cool design, it works the same way. You can just grab your light and it just slides right on there. And there's your light mount right there. I do really like the release toggles on these. They're nice and big and they feel solid versus a lot of them they're really small guys and you really gotta kind of push them really hard this one's really easy to push you just push and it slides right off really cool design there in here you also have a couple little tools here so you have little screws here a little cover that says the same thing nocturnal animal so you have those in a little baggie there and then of course then you have some tools so you have a little flathead screwdriver and then you have a little torx key right here and now uh, when I first opened this, I'll be honest, I kind of stared at it, I was like, why does it have tools? Like, what's the point of the tools when the light's assembled already? And we'll get to that in just a second here. So one of the big features of the Kiwi light here is that it has a big cutoff light, cutoff line. So if we turn this guy on, if I point the light kind of straight at the camera, you can see it's angled down. And it's very obvious how much it's angled down. It's probably crazy how far that cutoff is. So if I aim it straight, it's actually aimed down at an angle. So it has a big cutoff light to it. And so with that, that's where the tools come in. So if you wanted to mount your light just standard up on the bars, 
like so, like right up here, it would work fine. But what if you want to mount this to the GoPro mount on the bottom? And when you mount to the GoPro, when you mount this to the GoPro mount, all of a sudden the light's upside down. Instead of light aiming down, it's aiming straight up into the eyes of cars and everything coming your way. That's where the tools come in and where I thought was a really kind of interesting idea to it that you could actually flip this mount on the bottom and put it up on the top. So we're gonna go ahead, this little flathead is literally just here to pop this little cover off. So you can pop off our nocturnal animal cover. And right under there, there are three little holes that you can screw these little screws into. So we'll go ahead, we'll just undo these guys right here. So we'll just screw those guys on. And again, they don't have to be ridiculously tight because they weren't ridiculously tight in the first place. So I'm just gonna tighten them with this back end and just use the little top guy as our little lever. Well, we don't ridiculously over tighten these. All right, nice and tight there. And then we just get our little nocturnal cover here and we just gotta slap that guy right up on the top. We just gotta swap sides on this guy. We got our little cover on that side like nothing ever happened and we got our mount switched to the top. So it's kind of neat that it comes with all the tools needed to change the mounting on this light and make it work with what you need it to. So we can go ahead, we can slap this guy into there. It's actually pretty secure. You're not getting that out without pulling that lever. Again, I really like the lever on these. I think they work really good. I think they're really smooth. I like how they're bigger. They're bigger, but they don't get in the way is kind of the big thing I feel like. So I'll slap that guy on there and so you can mount your light just like this. Along with the light, you can get yourself a mount up for the front. So in my case, I already have a bar fly mount up here. So I have that set up for a computer and a GoPro on the bottom, a GoPro style mount. You can pick up your own style mount from them if you don't have one of those. I think they work pretty good. It's kind of cool everybody has something like this. And really, it works pretty much the same way. This one's actually, uh, it's actually about the same, same length as this one. Got a little boxy, it's pretty beefy. Has your spot to mount your garment up on the top here and then underneath it is your standard GoPro kind of mount right under there. And then inside of here has a GoPro extender and the GoPro mounting bolt as well, as well as again, another Allen key to tighten up everything. So it comes with everything you need to get it all installed. In my case, I already have one on the bike. We're just gonna use what's there already, but it is a great option. It's really cool that lights are coming, starting to come with these now because, I mean, they don't have to. They don't have to have something like this that holds your computer and holds your light. Instead, they're giving you something like that that's gonna be multi-purpose for you. So I really think that's really cool. I really think it's cool that lights are coming with those now. They used to not come with something like this. So we'll throw that off to the side. Light here, pretty simple. Like I said, it's just the two, just the two little fingers from the GoPro. Just slip this guy right into our GoPro mount, right up there. And we're just gonna slide our little bolt through. It does come with a locking bolt, or it does come with an actual Allen bolt in the package. So if you want this to not come off, you can use that locking bolt, and that'll keep that bottom, that bottom piece always on there, a little bit more secure. But in my case, that'll work good. And in my case, if we need to take it off, we just push this lever up and off comes the light ready to charge. Kind of neat design, I like the look of that. So, you just slap that guy right back on there. So turning this guy on, of course you have just the button right here on the top. Pretty easy to just touch that and you know it turns on and you can change modes from right there. The cool thing is these guys also provide an optional remote control for these. So it has a nice remote control. It looks like a th thumbprint on there. It's kind of a different look to it. I wouldn't have pictured that as the look. So pretty cool, you actually link these over Bluetooth is how they link together. It's a pretty simple process. And then once you have them connected, you can just turn your light on and off from the remote control. And of course you can change modes as well and change it like flashing mode if you want, or you can change it back to the steady mode. You can change everything you need to on the remote itself, as well as turn the whole light off, just like that, off of just the little tiny remote. All right, so we got all the lights off in here. It's time to show you guys how this thing actually works. So first off, you look at the little remote here. If I touch it, it actually lights up, which is kind of a cool thing, so you can actually tell you're hitting it in the middle of the night. And then to turn this guy on, all we gotta do is just push and hold, and there it is right there. So you can see right now it's actually angled up a little bit. So it's angled it kind of down to where we normally would have it when we're riding. Yeah, it's about right there. So you can see the light's kind of aimed forward. So if I stick my fingers right at the top of here, 
You can see it's bare. There's only a little bit of light really coming off of the top here. Most of the light is aimed straight down at kind of the tire of the truck here. So we can do that. We can go ahead. We can switch modes. So if you look, that's actually a low mode right there. You can see there's not that much light coming off, but there's still plenty enough to actually kind of see what's in front of you. If we go ahead and bump that up one, there's our medium mode right there. And then if we bump one more, there's our course, our high. So our 1200 lumens right there off the bat. Pretty freaking bright if I can say that. And I really do like the cutoff on this one. You wouldn't think it would have a cutoff because of the design. You think it would just aim straight ahead. But realistically, it cuts down. And the farther away you are, the more you can see that it kind of really cuts down the farther you go. It's kind of a neat design. I've never seen something quite as aggressive as this guy here. So if we want to go ahead, we can do our flashing modes here. To do our flashing, we're just going to go ahead and push and hold the button for two seconds. And it will start flashing. So that's pretty much our daytime, uh, I think that's a daytime flash right there. There's our breathe right there, kind of like you're breathing. And there's our other flashing. So you have both of those options there. Pretty aggressive, annoying flash in my opinion. I think the breathe is a little bit better. It's not quite as aggressive, but I do like that, especially if you're driving at night and you wanted that, that's kind of your secondary light. You could use that and that would get people's attention pretty good without being overly aggressive and distracting. So go ahead, switch it back, same thing, push and hold two seconds, and it switches right back into our high mode, and of course we can mess with our settings from there. So ultimately I really like the design of this light, I think it's really kind of a neat thing, as well as the remote here. I don't know how well the remote's going to hold up, especially with kind of its more rubber kind of top to it. I've had more, I've had other lights kind of with the same feel to them on the button that don't last very long, but we'll see. We'll see how long it actually lasts for. I like the light modes on this. I think it works pretty good with the cutoff here. I think that's kind of a neat, neat feature to it. But of course, doing this in our garage, not really a good test of this thing. Let's go ahead, wait till it gets dark. We'll take this guy outside and we'll give it a ride and see how it looks like in an actual ride in the dark. Okay, so out at night with the Kiwi light. Let's go ahead and we'll hit the switch here. Let's see if we can figure this out here. Okay, so that's our low right there. There's our medium. There's our high beam. Okay. This is the one with that pretty aggressive cutoff. And you can definitely see how aggressive that is. Because the light is aimed pretty, pretty much straight ahead and it's not even shining in front of us. That cutoff is really good at keeping the light away from cars while still letting you see a lot of the road. Let's see, let's kick it down here. So there's low, I mean, low is kind of low, especially for riding where there's no street lights, it's pretty low. Medium's not bad, high really makes me feel comfortable. And I really like the look of that. I really like the cutoff on that. It's just a really sharp cutoff. It's really good. I like that cutoff there. It is freaking cold. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I think that's a really good light. Plenty bright. You're not going to blind any cars in front of you. Any of your buddies. And it's super small. Like you barely know it's there on your bike because it's so long. Because it's long and skinny. You really don't notice it much. Well, I think that's a really good, really good light right there. All right, so the Kiwi light here, the Kiwi 1200. I really like this light. I think it works really good for what it's supposed to be, you know, for just the light. It's very thin, it fits in between tight spaces, which is something on my new road bike that kind of is a thing. It's kind of a tight space right now in the front with the cables kind of going everywhere. So it fits really good in there. Along with that, you can mount it either way, which I really like. So you can mount it kind of up like this and mount it on top of the bars, or you can switch the mounting point to the top and you can hang it down underneath on the undermount, which works really good, especially with the sharp cutoff this thing has. You can aim that and have it aimed the right way, no matter which style of, of mounting option you want to go with. It's pretty cool. I like it. I think it's a really 
cool light. It's definitely something to check out. It's a really neat light. I don't think you'd be disappointed with this light at all. I think it's something I'm going to be running pretty often. I really like the design, the feel, and the functions of this light. The only thing on this light that I'm not sure about is the actual switch. I like the feel of the little rubber on here to push the push the button. I just don't know how long that would actually last for. It's my only concern. I've had things kind of the same kind of rubber feel and they don't last that long. So that's my only concern with that one, but even without the switch, it works really good. So I'm gonna have a link to the Kiwi 1200 down in my description below. Big thanks to these guys for sending us out so I can test this light out here. Great, it's great light. Awesome front light for you to use. Super thin, great beam, great cutoff. Awesome for someone looking to commute and get you know where a lot of cars are going to be. That cutoff makes a big difference while still being super bright to light your way. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up. Appreciate the support. Any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Love talking to you guys. Love answering questions you guys have. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching today.